Miracy. I'm an evangelist for good, honest relating for long-term sustainable relationships. That kind of community and relationship building where nobody's trying to take advantage of anybody. Everybody's bringing their honest stuff to the market, charging a fair price, not the best price. Hello and welcome to Blowing Up, a podcast that shows entrepreneurs like you how other businesses exploded in the best possible way. I'm Linda Claire Puig, the founder and CEO of Six Figure Newsletters, and I'm here with my co-host Ari Eni, the head of strategy for the ACES Business Acceleration Program at Mercy. Hey there, Linda. In each episode of Blowing Up, we showcase an entrepreneur whose business blew up. It experienced what seemed to be a sudden success. But as we all know, that kind of success is not random or a fluke. The company employed a specific strategy that caused its rapid rise in revenue. So today we're going to dive deep into that strategy so that you can learn from it and determine how you might apply elements of it to your business. In this episode, we take a look at a strategy that some might consider kind of radical, but it has actually been getting more attention over the last few years. I'm talking about pay what you can. Yes, allowing people to decide what they pay you. The thing is, there's a lot of misunderstanding about how this works, and you want to know what to know so you don't dig yourself a financial grave. Our guest to break it down for us is Tad Hargrave, who calls his decision to do pay what you can the best thing he ever did for his business. Tad is a self-described hippie with a knack for marketing, and he helps what he calls other hippies get more clients in ways that feel good to all involved. Welcome to Tad. Now let's jump right into the conversation. I did two intro workshops, and the first intro had three people at it. And it's just always hilarious. You teach a marketing workshop and nobody shows. That's great. But I said, look, just come. I'm here. Here's the deal. My computer crashed. I was on the road. I wasn't able to promote it. I'd rather do something than just sit, you know, and wander around town. Pay me whatever you want to pay me at the end. And I'd watched a lot of street performers growing up. So I I had this sort of background knowledge of the whole busking thing. And so I thought that's what I'll do. This will be like a weekend busking event. I thought I'd make a few hundred bucks or something, but I made much more. I was surprised at how much people paid. I can't remember what it was. I just remember it was in the thousands and I was shocked. And I just thought that was so easy. I didn't have to do the whole pitch. I didn't have to do the whole rigmarole and spiel and prove to them this was worthwhile. They just signed up. How great is this? The vibes were so good. I just loved it. So what took it from, okay, this is a new shtick I'm trying out to... Yes, you feel like, okay, it is working. This is how you run things now. A key ingredient was laziness. (laughs) It was so much easier to do it this way. Every time I thought about doing it, like, oh, God, doing a whole pitch, I was just like, that feels terrible and so much work. I'd have to really think that through. And this works. Why not just roll with it? So that was a lot. And then I also kept figuring out ways to tinker with it. So when I first started, I didn't have a deposit. And that meant I got a lot of Mm -hmm. no-shows. I mean, you too know. It's a heartbreaking way to start any kind of workshop. You're expecting 36 people, 12 people show up. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's a hard vibe as a workshop leader to, to start with. It's a bitter taste in your mouth. So I started charging a deposit, and that immediately made a difference in terms of the no-show rate. And then the people were coming up with so much guilt And I kept trying to tell people, like, whatever you pay is fine. I don't care. It's all right. But it was still there. So I said, look, how about this? You can pay me anything you want to pay, spread out in four checks over the next year for any amounts on any dates. It's entirely up to you. And when I did that, the guilt vanished. Because people were, I think, once they thought about spreading it out over a year, they could pay me an amount that felt closer to what felt like the weekend was worth. And so I just had a little envelope, you know, in chronological order with these checks and I'd cash them when the day came. And so that made a big, big difference. So they wrote the checks out in advance. That's cool. Then I hit a groove. I started to find the threads. And as that happened, people insisted on paying me. They came up and said, well, here's 50 bucks for tonight. I said, no, no, it's a free workshop. And they'd look at me and say, here's 50 bucks for tonight. 
And <laughs> I just had to accept it. And when that <laughs> happened two or three times, I thought, the universe is telling me to start charging. And mm-hmm. I did. Mm-hmm. So I, um, you know, slowly got more comfortable with it. I remember one time in Toronto, somebody had given me four checks for 450 So it was $1,800 they paid for the weekend. Pay what you can. And I had the very visceral feeling of, I have to send some of this back. I can't keep this all. This is too much. And I just like, Tad, you took half an hour at the end to explain they can pay whatever they want. She wanted you to have this, just accept it. I could see that people, if they weren't manipulated and pressured and pushed to pay, people were naturally generous Mm -hmm. if they could afford to be. It was beautiful. So many weekends I'd stand there at the end of a day long workshop, looking out at the people and thinking how grateful I was that they're in the world, how grateful I was that I had anything at all to be able to offer them and that I'd come across this way of pricing it that had let them enter the room because so often they were kept out. It's really touching. I feel that every time at the end of the workshops, I feel very moved by what's happening. It doesn't feel like charity to me at all. I mean, because they're paying, (laughs) but it does feel like community. It does feel like a kind of solidarity of, hey, we're all in this together somehow. Mm -hmm. And I have this to offer and you're offering this to your people. You know what else occurs to me is that when you give people a chance to give, it's a generosity on your part because it feels good to give. So if they're in the mindset of of Uh giving to you versus paying you for a thing, right? That's a very different transaction altogether that you're talking about. It does feel different. Everything does come from generosity and it comes from just wanting to give as opposed to feeling like you owe somebody something and you're in debt and interest is accruing if you don't, which is how in modern society we look at all this. So yeah, there is a sweetness that comes from it. You're creating a sense of goodwill on both receiver and giver. Yeah. And to me, that's the whole game of marketing. So first, I think this is fascinating. I'm curious as to your thoughts around what kind of offers this can work for, because you're doing it mainly with workshops. Do you do it for any other kinds of offers? Well, first of all, there's nothing spiritually superior about a pay what you can pricing that people just have to get (laughs) over that. Sometimes I think they think, oh, well, this is the real enlightened thing. It's just not. There are frankly more selfish reasons to do it than altruistic reasons in my mind. Mm -hmm. So you don't get any spiritual points for pricing in this way. Number two, you don't have to price everything in your business, pay what you can. It doesn't all have to be like that. Uh, I would really recommend if people are going to do it, just pick one thing in their business. And that depends what you want to do. So I like to travel and do workshops. And for touring and workshops, pay what you can is just, for me, worked so well. But for one-on-one, that was a flat rate. For my eBooks, that's a flat rate. Mm -hmm. For my membership, that's a flat rate. But other people might do it in other ways. I think Mark Silver, my beloved colleague, he has a membership and he does that, pay what you can. I know other colleagues who've done the one-on-one, pay what you can. And of course, you can do pay what you can just as special offers. You can Mm -hmm. say for this month, these things are pay what you can. Or just uh, here's a 48-hour pay what you can sale. I think that humans go between collapsing and posturing. Mm -hmm. The posturing is you puff yourself up, you make yourself very plastic, fake in a way. And then there's the collapsing, which you make yourself very small and you're apologizing for everything and no boundaries. And so then if you combine collapsing with pay what you can, there's also people don't treat it respectfully. It'll sound like, uh, so thanks for coming to my workshop. Uh, yeah, so it's pay what you can. So, I mean, uh, uh, oh, I know you got to go. Okay. Um, well, thanks for coming. Uh, um, anyway, there's a bucket at the door if you want to put in some money or, or not. I mean, you don't have to, but it's, you can take money out. Maybe you need it more than I do. Uh, but th- thanks for, you know. And it's so offhand. It's so not thought through. There's no ceremony to it. There's no self-respect uh-huh. in it. It's, it's, it's um, almost apologetic. It's apologetic. I'm sorry I yeah. even hear that you had to listen to me. <laughs> oh my God, now I've just asked you for money. But you can come from a more composed place where you're not posturing, you're not collapsing, and do exactly what I said with the bucket. I heard Charles Eisenstein did this once. He did a speaking gig, and there was a bucket being passed around, and people knew it was pay which can, cash at the end. He said, look, I just invite you to consider what you'd be moved to give considering what a ticket price might be and what you have and and you might want to give more than the regular amount you might want to give less 
He said, but I also know there are people in this audience who are really struggling and maybe don't even have bus fare to get home. If you're in that situation, feel free to take a little bit out that that's for you. This is how we support each other as community. Now, should we talk about what's the value of the offer itself? That's an important conversation to have. But people don't say it that way. For the most part, they just say, charge what you are worth. They stand up on stage and they say, we know $10,000 is a lot for a coaching program. But the question you have to ask yourself is, are Are you you worth worth it? it? (laughs) Don't you deserve this? In fact, aren't you hurting the world by not spending $10,000 in my program? It's like, oh, me spending this $10,000 is me saying I'm worthy. I just say, just so we're clear, this has nothing to do with what I'm worth. I'm fine with that. This is just, what did you get from the weekend? And what can you afford right now? What feels right to spend? I trust that. And that, you know, that's all. I feel myself just taking a big, deep breath hearing all this. It just feels... (laughs) feels so sweet. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Talking about money can feel sweet and relaxing. Talking about marketing can feel <laughs> sweet and relaxing. What needs to be in place for somebody to do this? One thing that needs to be in place, I think, is having a clear sense of what you would charge if you were going to just charge the full amount. The most stressful thing for somebody sitting in a page can is they have no idea. They've never been to a marketing workshop before. So they really don't know is like, $20 for the weekend? Is it 200 or is it 2000? Is it 20,000? Like they're so drowning in no idea. So what I started doing with the day long workshop is I'd say, look, it's $200 flat fee if you just want to pay that, that's fine. Cuz some people also the the stress of pay what you can was enough that they're like I just want to pay up front and deal, I don't want to have to deal with pay what you can. Just, just tell me. Just <laughs> tell me and I'll pay you and that's fine. You have to make sure you give yourself time. Because this is part of the overgiving is people will get to the end of the workshop and there's no time to talk about the money. So, you know, have a timer. Just make sure that you are set that like 15 minutes before the end, you're moving into that. You know, this is still part of the sales process. It's not about avoiding sales. It's about this is a different way to do it. Yeah. I mean, the mistake would be you say in a live workshop, here's an envelope at the end before you leave, just put the money in and put it. Because there's also something about ceremony and ritual, which I think also means something Mm -hmm. to people out of respect for what you did that day, out of respect for yourself and out of respect for them. Take some time to slow it down and talk about it to make sure that they're giving an amount that is going to feel good to them. So you talk about all the things that you know are already in the room. You know they're sitting there the whole day trying to figure out what they're going to pay. I have to say, look, and just wait until the end before you pay because you never know. (laughs) I could have a weak finish. So (laughs) hold off in deciding. (laughs) Obviously, in the past few years, we've all been somewhat grounded from in-person workshops. So do you do pay what you can online? I do. Yeah, I I started, I took my day-long workshop, moved it online. Mm -hmm. So it's the exact same workshop slightly different format to give breaks and we don't need an hour and a half for lunch, you know, just take Mm -hmm. two shorter breaks and a shorter lunch break. And otherwise it's identical. Okay. Have you seen a dip over the past? Like, and now are you concerned with fear of recession and all of these things? I've seen a dip going online. I Mm -hmm. think it's, I'd have to do the math 60 or $70 a person versus a hundred dollars in person. I don't know why that is. I think maybe there is something about being in person intimacy and also accountability in a way that's there where they Uh feel a bit more connected to you as a human being instead of just somebody on a screen. Do you consider yourself an evangelist for pay what you can? Like, do you, do you want this to be a movement? No, no. I want goodwill to be a movement. Mm. I want people relating to each other in a good way to be a movement. That's what I'm an evangelist for, is that kind of community and relationship building where nobody's trying to take advantage of anybody. Everybody's bringing their honest stuff to the market, charging a fair price, not the best price. You know, Tolkien has this line, he says, the praise of the praiseworthy is beyond all rewards. And that's how it feels being paid with pay what you can, is that these Mm -hmm. people who you, you consider so praiseworthy are praising you in the form of money. And saying, we think that what you're offering is worthwhile. So part of it is the money, but so much of it is who it came from. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Dad. This has been fascinating. Oh, well, I'm so glad to have this time with you. So let's talk. Mind blown, right? I've known Tad for a really long time, and I knew very vaguely that he did these pay-what-you-can workshops, but honestly, I was skeptical that they worked. (laughs) But after hearing the details and Tad's underlying philosophy, well, call me impressed. Thank you so much to Tad for his generosity in sharing his pay what you can model. If you'd like to study it more and keep in touch with Tad, be sure to get his gift to you, the Marketing for Hippies Starter Kit. This has Tad's most up-to-date thinking on ethical marketing. It's got full footage of his pay what you can workshop for you to study and tons of bonus material. You'll find it at blowingup.rocks forward slash Tad. That's blowing up dot rocks forward slash Tad. This episode of Blowing Up was produced by Linda Claire Puig. Cynthia Lamb is our managing producer and Danny Eney, our executive producer. Post-production is by Post Office Sound. To make sure you catch all the really great episodes of Blowing Up, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, we'd love it if you could leave us a starred review or share the show with a friend. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.